Imagine a setup where a visitor automatically signs up for a new website, completes payment, selects a template, and his website is ready for customization without any human intervention. Now, this is possible with turnkey websites concept on WordPress platform, also called WAS, Websites as Service. Now, sharing what all is needed for such amazing automated setup, here is Matthew Rodella. So let's welcome Matthew on the show and get started. Hi, Matthew. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. So you are fresh from WordCamp US, right? That's right. I'm sure it yep, was an amazing experience, right? Because it's the best it, one. It, it is. It is. If you could have an opportunity to go to either WordCamp Europe or WordCamp US, mm-hmm. And I believe WordCamp Asia is coming soon now too. They 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 announced that um, this year at WordCamp US. Um, but go to one of those regional WordCamps because that's where everybody goes. You know, all the vendors, all of the you know the personalities that you know from online. They're all together in one place, and you can you know have a beer with them, which is nice. <laughs> awesome. So before we begin with the technical topic of turnkey websites, which I'm sure is technical for a lot of listeners because it's still not mainstream. Why don't you give a quick introduction about your online life? Yeah. So, I mean, I started um, in the uh, IT space. Um, I was working in corporate IT for uh, a while, a little under a decade. And um, then I decided to go off on my own and start my own business because I just, you know, didn't like the corporate life. I think a lot of us can relate to that. And uh, so I started doing um, IT consulting as, uh, as a, uh, a freelancer. And um, I quickly learned that the, the piece of the IT puzzle that I enjoyed doing the most was building websites. And uh, I had been, you know, using WordPress on and off um, since, you know, since around when it first got started. I think maybe I started using it around 2005. Uh, and, you know, I'd use it for projects and personal uh, websites and stuff. Um, but I always, you know, was, was familiar with it. And then once I started my business and I started building websites for my clients, then I really dug, dug deep into it and learned, you know, how to code in PHP. And I learned JavaScript and, and HTML and CSS and all this stuff I needed to know to be able to tweak themes and, and, and plugins and stuff to do what I wanted them to do. Um, and so that was about, f- I, I started doing WordPress full-time about five years ago. And, uh, and now I've been doing that um, as well as, you know, part of that journey was learning about turnkey websites. And uh, I ended up building, you know, my own turnkey platform about four years ago. Mm-hmm. And there weren't really, there wasn't money, much training or, or many plugins or to facilitate that. So I kind of had to learn on my own how to put that together. And then uh, and I, I figured it out. And then I started teaching other uh, WordPress um, professionals how to do the same, you know, build out a turnkey platform for themselves as well. Cool. Now you talk about turnkey websites concept very comfortably, but I'm sure listeners would, most of the listeners would be a little uncomfortable with this, even this word, because they are not familiar. I, I know a lot of people won't be familiar with it. So now... A user who is only familiar with WordPress and comfortable, you know, building websites, they're using a page builder. How would you define the concept of turnkey website to that type of an audience? Yeah. So um, the way I define turnkey websites is that you, it's basically a a way for you to deliver a pre-built website for a customer. Um, uh, on an automated basis. So it, you're, you're delivering the same website to every new customer you have, but that website has all of the things that they need for, uh, for their industry. And then they can then go in and customize things like, you know, put in their own logo or, uh, edit the content or swap out some photos or whatever. And it's really, it's very similar to, you know, Squarespace or Wix or WordPress.com where it's a platform that you sign up for, you get a website and then, the user, it's up to the user to tweak it and make it their own. And so us as WordPress, um, you know, developers or, or designers or whatever we want to call ourselves, um, <laughs> we're building this platform based on the best practices that we know uh, should go into a website. And then we build the website once, it's the template, and then every new customer just gets a copy of that template so they can, they can use it and edit it and take it from there. Awesome. So 
I believe this would require WordPress multi-site as against the normal, what we are used to, the WordPress normal installation. Now, WordPress multi-site is itself a scary thing like for most of the people because it's yeah. multi-site. Most of the people are not even familiar about it. And those who know, they only know the surface that it's difficult. It's scary. Now, how would you define that in more simpler terms? Like, is it that scary? Yeah, it's, it's not really that scary. It's just something that you kind of need to play around with because really WordPress multi-site is WordPress. And the yeah. only difference is that you're adding an extra layer on top of it. And that is the, uh, the, the network admin. So there's, a, there's the dashboard of your regular website and then there's another network dashboard. And that's where you can go to uh, install plugins and themes and create settings for your entire network. And then, um, and then people can subscribe to uh, subsites, and then you can have multiple subsites. So it's basically uh, just a network of many WordPress websites, and you're all working off of one WordPress installation. You log in, you you could create sites and do everything like you would in a normal WordPress installation. So it is. It, it takes a little bit of a, a shift in your thinking, uh, what you're used to with WordPress. But once you play around with it a little bit. Um, it, becomes familiar very quickly because it's at its at the heart it's just wordpress so talking a little more in refined and more technical terms how difficult is it to manage a wordpress multi-site as is you know a standalone wordpress install like in terms of even technical requirements like you need a better server you need to have better security what all things from technical point of view are more you know important with regard to multi-site Right. And that's where I think a lot of people get, um, get caught up because there, there really isn't much of a difference between WordPress multi-site and a single WordPress installation as far as, um, you know, the requirements. The requirements are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as um, the plugins and themes you can use, you can use any WordPress plugin or any WordPress theme. Um, and there are certain plugins that are better suited for multi-site and what they call multi-site aware which means you can manage the plugin from the central network admin. Not every plugin can do that. But any WordPress plugin you can install on multi-site and then in, uh, activate it on individual subsites, just like it were a regular WordPress plugin. Um, so, you know, and, and security isn't any different either because you're dealing with one WordPress core installation. So all the best practices still apply. You know, you want to use strong passwords for your, your super admins. Uh, you want to, you know, uh, if, if you care about it, you want to maybe have a firewall, uh, like an application firewall, like WordFence or something like that. You want to maybe, uh, of course, keep your plugins and themes updated because that's still the most common vulnerability in multi-site or regular WordPress. So all of the security best practices you learn for WordPress apply exactly the same to WordPress multi-site. Um, something that people don't understand is the administrators of the subsites in your network have limited access. So they uh, don't have access to install their own plugins. They don't have access to your theme code or, mm -hmm. or your plugin code like you would as a regular admin. Um, they, can't, uh, they can't embed iframes or JavaScript in the post editor like you can if you're a regular admin. So they're very limited. So your, your admins on your subsites can't really do anything to damage your entire network. And, and WordPress did that on purpose, which I think was very smart. I think the one thing that would be required would be a bigger server or more powerful server when you are having a multi-site installation and say more subscribers there with individual websites. Yeah, it depends. I mean, you, you are getting the cumulative effect of all of your network sites. So for me, for my multi-site, I'm actually just on a regular WP Engine hosting plan. Mm -hmm. and, and usually the, the managed hosts like WP Engine uh, are, are fine because they're, they, they have you know, resources behind them that can scale with your needs. Um, and, and on my platform, my users don't get a lot of traffic. They're very local businesses. So they're getting you know, a few hundred uh, or maybe a few thousand visits a month. And so I have about 200 websites on my platform and the, the amount of visits and bandwidth and stuff that my whole network uses is about the same as a, you know, medium to high level um, website that gets a lot of traffic. 
So it, it's a cumulative effect, but most of your subsites, the users aren't going to have very popular websites. They're going to be, especially depending on the industry you're focused on, they're going to be very niche specific, very local. So it's, it's not too bad. You, you definitely just want to keep an eye on bandwidth and that kind of visits and that kind of thing. But I've, I'm, I'm on the, the, the second tier of WP Engine with my network and I haven't had to upgrade because the bandwidth and the, and the, you know, the visits haven't required that. So yeah, you, you, you do want to um, keep an eye on that, but you don't necessarily need a super powerful server. Um, anything that can, that can power a, a popular single WordPress website can probably po power your, your multi-site. Cool. Now let's talk about the real thing that's required for the automated setup. Now the idea here is the user signs up, selects a template, completes the payment, and the user is ready to customize his website according to his requirement. Now, this whole process has to be automated without any owner intervention. Now, what all things are required to have this automation on WordPress multi-site? Obviously, one requirement is WordPress multi-site, but on multi-site, what all things do you need? Well, first of all, um, it, it isn't required that it's automated. So mm -hmm. I, I prefer that it's automated and that's what I teach in my course. Mm -hmm. But some people choose to have some sort of setup involved. So like the customer will pay them, then they go in as the admin and create the subsite and you know add, add everything and get it set up for the customer mm -hmm. and then give it to the customer. And that, that's perfectly fine because that, that basically allows you to deliver a website a lot more quickly than you would if you were building out a single WordPress installation because you have the, the subsite template already set up. But I prefer you know, to, to, to scale and to make it automated so that um, I, I can scale it a lot quicker and a lot easier. And the, the single um, best way to do that is to, to get a plugin called WP Ultimo. And that is a plugin that is um, purposely, purpose built for turnkey websites on multi-site. So it facilitates the, um, the customer signing up for an account, choosing a template, um, getting the subsite created, and then paying on a subscription basis for access to that subsite. Um, another thing it does is it allows you to create a template site that you get set up with everything you need. And then every time someone signs up, it clones that, that template site so that it takes everything that you set up and then copies it for the user. Um, so that, that makes it really easy for you to set up something nice. And then you can have multiple templates. So you can have, you know, three, five, a dozen templates that you, the user can choose when they sign up and then they can uh, get that created. And then the final thing I think I like about WP Ultimo is it also allows you to limit um, certain things um, on a per subscription basis. So say you have three subscription plans and the first subscription plans only allows the user to create five pages and only allows them to upload five megabytes of, of you know, upload media. And then the second tier, you know, you increase those numbers and then the third tier, maybe it's unlimited. So you can, you can limit what your your customers can do on their sites and then charge accordingly so it it takes care of all of that the payment everything and it's a kind of an all-in-one solution for automation and that plugin didn't exist when i when i started my turnkey platform so i i used uh, restrict content pro and it has a multi-site add-on and that still works fine um it's not as feature rich and it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of wp ultimo yeah. but that still allows you know a user to sign up pay and then get access to a subsite on multi-site. Yeah, that, that is what I was going to ask you because WP Ultimating came recently on the scene and you've been doing this for more years and I guess you stitched a few plugins to build the automated setup and now you prefer W Ultimo as against, you know, stitching few plugins together to build that whole, you know, workflow. Is that correct? Right, exactly. WP Ultimo kind of combines a few different plugins and a few different things that now all in one package. So yeah, that's, that's the one I recommend. That's kind of the best one these days because like I said, it's the only plugin right now that's purpose built for building an automated turnkey platform. I think there are other plugins as well who do kind of similar thing like Vaspro. I think even that does the same thing. Yeah, Vaspro um, is, has some, some plugins that are built for turnkey websites, but you still need WP Ultimo for the, for the subscription and the payment part. And then the WASP Pro plugins, you know, go on top of that and do a bunch of things, you know, after the, the user signs up using WP Ultimo, 
then they have a bunch of other plugins to, to make the rest of the process easier. Now you said that you prefer the automated, you know, uh, initial signups and, you know, client building his own website and selecting a template and customizing it. Now, once he's done with that, I guess the further onboarding handholding still require a little bit of custom help in terms of support tickets and all that. How do you achieve that? Like, because when you have more clients and obviously the margins will also be restricted in this kind of setup, how do you cut down on your support tickets and, you know, human interaction with specific right. clients as it gets more busy? Yep. So there are a few ways that I've done that. Um, the first way is to have um, a good support ticketing system. Um, I use Freshdesk, mm -hmm. um, but there are, you know, lots of them, Help Scout, uh, Intercom, whatever you want to use, uh, a place where people can go to submit tickets. But the, the, the biggest thing is a place where you can have a knowledge base of issues that either you know you think they might have or issues that people have had in the past that you've answered and then you can have and I've built up a nice you know large knowledge base of a bunch of different questions and answered it's kind of like a, a frequently asked questions database um, and that's great because then that's a place people can go if they have questions to get answers or if they ask you you can just point them to the to the article and they can get their question answered so knowledge base is the first one um, and that helps with people who have questions, but then you want to walk them through the steps of how to build out their site. So I do that with videos, um, onboarding videos. And uh, WP Ultimo, the developer of WP Ultimo has an add-on which allows you to create your own dashboard in WordPress using uh, Beaver Builder or another page builder. So you can build out a custom dashboard inside of WordPress. And what I do is I build that and it has all my onboarding videos right there in a row. So when someone first logs into their website, the first thing they see are, are the, the getting started videos. And then I have about six getting started videos that are about 10 to 15 minutes each. And then the, they play it and it's just me on the screen showing people where to go and what to do and where to click and how to add their logo, you know, the steps they need to follow to, to add service pages and stuff like that. Um, so that's a big help. And that, that really eliminates a, a lot of you know, me needing to hold their hand through the whole process. And then the final step is um, for me is having a good automated email sequence mm -hmm. so that when someone signs up, they get emails dripped out to them, you know, one by one for about a week uh, talking about, you know, again, how to get things set up, um, how to get support, you know, frequently asked questions, frequent issues that people might have and answering those questions in, a, in the emails as well. And so between those three things, a knowledge base, um, onboarding videos and uh, automated email sequence. It really answers all the questions they have. And then of course they, they might have additional questions afterwards. And then I have the help desk they can go to ask the questions. And to give you an idea, um, if you do the onboarding properly where you're answering all the questions in, the, in an automated fashion, you're not going to get a lot of support requests. I have about 200 customers on my platform and I get, you know, about five or six support tickets a week. And most of them are questions that are easy to answer. I just point them to the knowledge base article. So it's really not too hard to, to support once you get it up and running. Cool. That, that's an amazing number. But I'm going to ask you a little hypothetical question here. Now, for example, you have a, say you have 10 websites on multi-site in turnkey setup and the 10 other websites vis -a -vis are on single installation, the normal, you know, how we build websites on WordPress. Now, which would have more support request, the sing standalone ones or the multi-site one? Uh, it really depends. The standalone <laughs> ones have the potential to have more because the user has the ability to log in and install whatever plugin they want to. Great right? mess. <laughs> yeah, they can, they can create a mess. They can get in there and really mess things up. Whereas with multi-site, your users don't have access to to download plugins or install plugins or download themes and install themes. And you can really um, restrict their access to menu items. So that's another actually way to reduce support tickets is to use a plugin um, like uh, the UI manager plugin to um, edit the, the menu admin items. menu and get, get rid of a bunch of menu items that you don't want them to have access to so that it's very simple, very straightforward, and then uh, they can't screw things up <laughs> like they can with a single install. No. In turnkey website, a user would need a starter template to you know begin with, and so someone who wants to set up 
this turnkey website business or the whole thing in their agency, they would need a template collection to begin with. So how can person begin with that? Like, do you use pre-made templates that are available or you build your own collection? Yeah, you can do either one. For me, you know, I'm not a really good designer. Um, and uh, so I like to start with, you know, pre-made templates. So I, I'm, I use Astra and Astra has, you know, all those beautiful starter sites that, that are already like pre-built sites, you know, from, from the ground up. So I use, um, I'm using a handful of Astra starter sites. And then of course I customize them for my audience uh, and, you know, and, and edit them. But for the most part, <clears throat> We as WordPress users are familiar with Astra and the starter sites, but your customer probably has no idea what Astra is or has no idea what. The and they wouldn't be is. interested, also. <laughs> yeah, so you just give them a nice-looking website. It doesn't matter how you deliver it to them, and and they'll be happy. So whether it's just a starter Astra template or whether it's something you custom build from the ground up, it's really up to you and what you're comfortable with. So page builders here play an important role, right? Yeah, I think users on the internet expect some kind of drag and drop visual way of building a website because, again, of Squarespace and Wix and all of these other things that are out there with commercials on TV talking about, <laughs> ooh, you can you know build your website very easy, just drag and drop. Five so minutes. I think yeah, the average <laughs> consumer is going to expect some kind of page builder. Um, so I, for, for Turnkey, I like Beaver Builder because they have um, the agency version of Bil Beaver Builder is multi-site compatible, mm -hmm. meaning you can, um, you can hide or show different modules for your whole network. Mm -hmm. You can white label the plugin um, and the licensing is unlimited. So it's, it's, it's a good uh, plan that's built for multi-site and it works very well for multi-site. Uh, but I know uh, a lot of people who use Elementor and Divi and Brizzy uh, and Oxygen on their turnkey platform as well. You just have to be careful of licensing. Sometimes the plugin doesn't allow you to, um, to have unlimited licenses on, on a turnkey platform. Uh, so you just need to check the licensing for that. Um, sometimes you need to insert a, a new you know, um, license key for every subsite you create. Um, but with Beaver Builder, you don't have to do that. It's it's the the agency plan is unlimited, and uh, and it, it you know it's it's pretty intuitive for my users. Uh, it's the interface is very simple, so they get the hang of it pretty quickly. Uh, so so I like using that one. And what about the other main important components or plugins besides the page builder? Like, what do you use for SEO and maybe image optimization or even a catching system? Yeah, so um, the, the key for the plugins, especially if it's a plugin that your users are going to be interacting with, mm -hmm. you want to find a plugin that you can either white label or that has very minimal branding because, you know, they buy at a website from you, but then when they log in, they see, you know, Yoast or whatever branding all over the place, and then they get confused and they're not sure who, who, who's building the website. So I like, you know, plugins that are very minimal as far as the branding. So for SEO, I like SEO press mm -hmm. and SEO press has white label built into, I think one of their higher plans. So you can totally white label the plugin. You can, it's network uh, multi-site compatible. So you can show or hide different features for your whole network. Um, uh, so I like that one. I like, um, uh, what, what were the other ones <laughs> you asked about? Image optimization. Oh, catching. image optimization. So there, um, WPMU Dev has, has a lot of good multi-site compatible plugins. All of their plugins are multi-site compatible because that's the world they came from originally. So I like uh, WP Smush, um, their, their, uh, their plugin for image optimization. Uh, it's multi-site compatible. It automatically smushes the image, images that your, your, your customers upload. So that's really nice. Uh, and then for um, caching, uh, you know, I'm on WP Engine. WP Engine's built-in yeah, caching is pretty good, um, but any of the caching plugins work work well. Uh, you know, w, the WP Rocket um, or uh, W3 Total Cache, or you know, any of them, I, I think work pretty well. Because, uh, like I said, it's it's no different than having a single WordPress installation. So, okay, cool. Now, someone listening to this and interested in setting up turnkey website solution in their agency just as a, another vertical for revenue or just you know testing for testing waters 
what all expenses are there to begin with? Like what are the major, you know, buckets of expenses that he needs to be careful when he wants to set up this kind of a thing? Yeah. Um, you know, it's really uh, the hosting, of course, you want a good managed host. Um, there are certain hosts that are compatible with WP Ultimo with domain mapping and SSL. Mm -hmm. So that when your customers want to map a domain, they can do it through WP Ultimo and it automatically gets added to your host's control panel. And there are only a handful of hosts that are compatible with that. Uh, if you go to the, the documentation in WP Ultimo and search for uh, compatible host, you'll get a list of, of the ones that are compatible. And, uh, and, so, and those hosts aren't the cheapest. So they're you know, starting at around $50 a month and going up from there. So you're going to have the hosting. You're going to have the plugins. You're going to want to buy the, 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 the top level, you know, the agency version of all the plugins that you're using because that allows for unlimited licensing. Um, so, so that can get expensive, you know, if you add stack those on top of each other. Uh, and then um, really the only other expense is, you know, if you want to do training, like we have a training course for how to put it all together mm -hmm. or the time that it will take you to just put everything together on your own. That's an expense, right? Your time that it takes to do that, whether you hire a developer or a designer, or you do it all yourself. Uh, and then the, whatever support system you use, you're going to have to pay for that as well. Um, outside of that, there's really no other, um, no other expenses uh, other than, you know, the, the hosting, the plugins, the support, and any kind of training you want. Cool. Now, I would be honest here, like turnkey website concept is altogether new for me. Like even though I've been into WordPress for quite some time now, almost 10 years, but uh, so I don't know what are the success parameters or even success stories. Now from you, you've been into this and you are an expert into turnkey websites. You now you even teach it. What is the scope of money-making opportunities in this setup? Like, do you, can you share any, you know, examples of turnkey website success? Obviously one is you, but other than yeah. you. Yeah, so this is this is this is interesting because there have been examples of people who have built turnkey website platforms in the past, mm -hmm. but they they typically have been very secretive about it. Yeah, and they don't share you know their income. They don't share how they built it out. It's it's all very top secret. Um, so I think one of the things that I started was the movement to get get the dialogue started, get people talking about it, making it more accessible. And, and then, you know, getting people to try it out. So right now we're still, I think, at the early stages of people trying out the concept for the first time and really, you know, seeing how it fits into their business. So, so what I recommend for people is that it's, it's, it's a good thing to start part time. So if you have an agency and you build websites for customers, you probably run into customers that just can't afford your, you know, your premium services of building a website from scratch. Um, but you, you know, you can help them. So that's a good opportunity to maybe build a turnkey website on the side and then, and then start to, you know, shuffle people over there who can't afford your regular websites. And, uh, and then it's, it's a nice recurring revenue, um, addition to your, to your, to your business. Like for me, I have 200 customers on, on my turnkey platform, but it's still just a part-time part of my business. I still have WordPress care plans. I still have, you know, the training I do. Um, and so it's probably about one third of my overall revenue comes from my, my turnkey websites, but it's very predictable and it grows very steadily. So, you, you know, just over time, it's a nice, you know, um, recurring revenue monthly kind of income thing that, that you can build up. So for me, I have 200 customers on, on my platform. It's about a third of my revenue. I know some other people who, um, are, are in the same boat they're doing it part-time and they're building up their platform but i know people like people might not know this and and i know some people in your audience might be familiar with lee jackson over at uh, agency yeah. trailblazers yeah. um he actually has been running a turnkey platform for many years and it's very successful and it's in the uh, the event industry and he does multiple six figures with it um and that's something where it's it's a premium product so it's not automated he actually onboards people and and builds out the sites custom for them but it's the same concept of turnkey websites and he's able to build that up to a very successful business. So, you know, there's lots of different ways to approach it, um, but it's definitely very accessible for us because there's not a lot of extra things you need to learn or buy to get it started. And then once you get it started, then it's up to you how much you want to scale it, how much, you know, you want to focus on it and whether you want it to be your full-time business or just keep it as a part-time supplement to your agency work. 
And I believe turnkey concept is more suited for brochure type simple website as in games making a WooCommerce store or LMS site. Yeah, especially the way I teach it automated on, on multi-site. Um, uh, brochure sites are the best, are the best approach. Um, and you know, the, the number one way to be successful with this is to really focus on a narrow industry. So for me, I focus mine on uh, computer repair shops. Mm -hmm. um, other people focus on, you know, um, like lawyers or dentists or even narrower than that, like plumbers or house cleaners. Um, and if you focus on a very narrow niche of people, then you can say, hey, I am the only website platform for plumbers. And you come to me, you get a website for $50 a month. You have all of the content you need to get started. We have a bunch of stock images for you to use. And you don't have to worry about hosting or anything else. We'll give you all the tools you need. And that's a very easy concept to sell to, to uh, that very narrow, the very narrow niche. And then you don't have to worry about all these crazy plugins. You just have, you know, a few key plugins that those, that those types of users will need. And, and then they're, they're set. And then another thing that you can do to earn even more revenue is sell add-ons. So once they're on your platform, then you can say, hey, we can, you know, write content for you. We can, you know, do SEO work for you. We can um, design, do graphic design work for you. And then that's even extra add-on money that you can earn from these customers over time. I'm curious, like, have you, uh, have you encountered any turnkey, you know, setup for especially WooCommerce? It's just like making your own hosted Shopify alternative. Yeah, it, you run into problems with WooCommerce because, um, the, there's actually one very um, key problem with WooCommerce, and that is that it uses a shared user database across your whole network. Mm -hmm. So if if your if your turnkey shop owner happens to have the same customer as another of your turnkey shop owners, they will log in and it'll say, "Hey, you already have an account on this website," even though they had an account on this website. It'll it's sharing that user those user accounts. So that's that's something to keep in mind, and that's why I don't think WooCommerce is the best solution for turnkey, um, especially automated turnkey where you can have lots and lots of customers on it. Um, so I, I tend to avoid um, e-commerce. I think maybe a better solution is something like Easy Digital Downloads if you mm -hmm. want to have some kind of you know e-commerce uh, available. That's a little simpler of a of a of a of a plugin. Um, and then there's there's another plugin called WP Simple Pay which is even easier. Basically, it just allows you to connect to Stripe and then create yeah. like a buy button. And that's all my customers need. They don't need a full shopping cart experience. They just need a... So if you, if you want to get into like, you know, a Shopify type of experience, you're going to need, you know, more robust hosting. You're probably going to need um, more control over your network and it's going to be a bigger, a bigger project. And that's not what I teach. <laughs> I teach keep it simple, have something easy to build and then, uh, and then take it from there. Awesome. Now let's switch gears and talk about your toolbox. So what are your current five favorite tools that power your online business? Oh, let's see. Um, current favorite tool. So I just started using and falling in love with Airtable. Um, I, I really like Airtable. Who, those of you who don't know, it's like kind of, you know, Google Sheets on steroids. Yeah. And you can, you know, create a very interactive spreadsheet with lots of different things. So I started using that and I really like it. Um, I, my, me and my team use Slack, of course. That's a that's a really important tool for us. Um, WP Ultimo, I say, would be <laughs> one of my important tools uh, that that I use in my business. Um, we use Process Street. Process .st, um, is where we keep track of all of our processes and checklists in my business. Um, and then, actually, surprisingly, the fifth tool I think I couldn't live without is Gravity Forms. Because I use Gravity Forms for everything, for, for the add-ons, for my, my turnkey platform. It's just a Gravity Form with a Stripe integration. It allows me to quickly get a, a sales form up for no matter what to just sell something really quickly. Um, so I, I really like Gravity Forms. And I also use it in my turnkey platform because you can white label it. And it's very easy for, for my customers to figure out how to use as well. I think you're muted. Yep. Cool. So which is your recommended web hosting service? I guess you already mentioned it. WP Engine? 
WP Engine is 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 what I'm using now, but I am looking at some of the alternatives out there, um, especially for turnkey websites. So some of the good ones are um, Gridpane is a is a very new yeah. host. They're very much um, in line with the the turnkey idea, and they're always looking for ways to improve that. Uh, and then um, Closte, C L O S T E, um, is another one that that is fully compatible with automation. Um, with WP Ultimo, and and that's a very uh, very powerful one. Um, so th those are kind of the three that I'm kind of gravitating toward: uh, WP Engine, Gridpane, and Closte. Cool. Even the next question, your recommended page builder. I guess you mentioned Bevo a few times, yep. so it has to be yep. Bevo builder, right? Yep. Yep. It's one I like. No urge to set up multi-site using other page builders for now. Uh, not for now, just uh, and only because Beaver Builder has the multi-site enabled version. Uh, no other page builder has that. So um, once another page builder has that, then I would definitely start looking at it. Um, I know a lot of people love Elementor, and so that that's perfectly fine to use. The free version you can use, but it uh, license-wise. But it still it doesn't have a multi-site compatible version where you can manage the plugin from your network interface, whereas Beaver Builder has that. So that's why I continue to recommend them for turnkey websites. And your recommended email marketing service for sending those drip emails? Ah, so I use Active Campaign. Mm -hmm. um, I like Active Campaign because it's very powerful, but um, very affordable and very easy to get started. Cool. And last question, any upcoming tool or service that has caught your eye attention recently? Um, that's a good question. Um, you what must I, just you know, seen a new one at the WordCamp, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, I saw a lot. That's what I'm trying to think of. Um, the, I, I don't know how upcoming <laughs> these things are. <laughs> Um, so, so one, th one, one actually cool service that I really like is, um, okay. One plugin I really like is cart flows. Mm -hmm. That's a, a fairly new plugin that, um, allows you to build kind of funnel system on top of WooCommerce. I, that's a really good one. Um, another one that I really, another service I really like is funnel packs by Matt Davies. Yeah. Um, where you can buy kind of a prepackaged funnel content. Um, and that's really cool. And I've, I've been talking about him to get one set up for, for turnkey websites as well. Um, so, so that's really cool. It's kind of, a, I like those plug and play services where you just grab something that's pre-done and then implement it in your business. Awesome. So before we wrap this episode, where can people find you and what you can help people with? Yep. So you can find me at turnkeywebsitesblueprint.com. And that's where we have all of the training for how to set up your own turnkey website platform. We have the training course that opens, um, four times a year and mm -hmm. we take in intakes four times a year and that's six modules, six weeks where we walk you through step-by-step step how to choose a niche, how to build out um, all the tech and then how to do the onboarding, how to do support and how to do maintenance. So the whole, you know, A to Z process of setting up a turnkey website is all there for you. Uh, so you can go to that website. We also have um, uh, like a membership program and coaching and then a bunch of free training as well. And then we have the Facebook group. If you search turnkey websites in Facebook, it'll pop up. And that's the turnkey websites blueprint Facebook group where you can ask questions and learn more about all of the different tools we talked about today. And uh, you can ask questions about setting up your own platform. Awesome. So before we end this episode, do you have, do you want to say anything about turnkey websites or someone who's still on the edge or yeah, I'm just, uh, I just say, you know, figure out if it's a good fit for your business. Um, turnkey websites are very good if you have an existing audience or niche that you're really going after. And if, if that seems like you, you know, go ahead and give it a shot. Just install WordPress multi-site on, on your existing host, play around with it, um, get to know it a little bit. Uh, I think it's a very good business model um, for you to build up uh, a following of people who are paying you, you know, a monthly fee, they get a website, and then they, they get to know, like, and trust you. And then you can start to upsell them on more expensive, you know, more higher level services. And it's a great starting point, right, to get people into your world, to get them paying you on a monthly, on a monthly basis. And then you can get them higher and higher in your world. 
Um, so it's definitely worth checking out and, uh, and you know, just dig into it. And if you have any questions, come to our Facebook group and we'll, we'll be happy to help you out. Awesome. Matthew, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Me. Have a good day. I did. Thank you.